What is up, the guys and girls? Welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite penguin, the Penguinator. And today, I have for you the full walkthrough of how to complete Skullbreaker. That is correct. Every single skull. Skull 1 through 6. And I'm really going to go into in, in depth with this. By that, I mean this. I will go in depth on how to get Skull 3, which is a pain in the butt step for a lot of people because of the ciphers. It's mostly guessing for most people right now. However, I've come up with a method that has worked for me every single time right now. I've not failed with it yet. However, there is still other locations that I'm sure we don't know about that might cause it not to work all the time. But, so to be safe, we'll say that this works 75% or more of the time. For me, it has worked 100% of the time. Every time I've done it, I've tested it over and over again. It has worked for me every single time. I tried to help Damon that game earlier with it, and it didn't work. So, I think I figured out what went wrong with that. So, I will try to explain it a little bit. But I'm hoping this will at least give you a guide to help you complete Skull 3 75% or more of the time. Because I know it's a headache. I know it's driving people crazy. And nobody's really come up with a method other than just guess. But hopefully this one will just give you some help. Now that's what I'm hoping for. Because that's why I made my channel. I want to help people out. I want to help them be able to get stuff done without, you know, wanting to rack their brains against the wall because of it. So... I'm going to do that one. I'm going to go in-depth with number five, which is the chess pieces. I'm going to show you every single location for the chess pieces. And with that one, I'm also going to show you a method of no matter what uh, starting position it gives you for the queen, I will put up on the screen every solution that you could possibly come up with in different areas, different methods. And I'll show you a, a chess board as well that will be numbered and lettered so it'll be easier to follow as well but let's go ahead get into it and I'll show you what to do alright guys as you can see I'll play through most of the beginning of the map now we are on skull one first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go in here to the main area now for me you're looking for a little power box and it's usually right there on that plat uh, pillar however it is not there Another location for this box can be right here between those or just underneath it. So since it's not there, we are going to head this way. And the other location it could be is right over here in the main cargo bay. You look at the cargo bay, you look right over here. It could be right there. However, it's not there. So now we head this way towards the water trap area. And we will try to see if it is there, which it should be. So, it, since it's not in the other location, so you go over here, look, go to the foot of the stairs, look straight up. Yep, there it is. And all you need is the grenade off your OSA. You don't need to throw a, a hand grenade at it. So, you do that, you now have skull number one. Alright. So, let me go ahead. I want to get some pack a punch weapons and stuff before I start skull number two. So let me go ahead and do that, and then we'll fast forward to how to do skull number two. All right, guys, once you have the weapons you want and everything, you're going to look for these red X's that are on the floor. You have one right there. You're going to come over here, and there's going to be another one right there. And number three of these red X's is going to be right over here on this little platform section. And this one, up oh, there it is. It's right there. And number four is the one I like to go to because I just find it easier to to defend from this one because they only come in three locations and it's going to be right here so what you're going to do is you're going to stand on it and that activates this circle now immediately once it activates take your thumb off of the left joystick only use the right joystick and shoot that is it that way you do not accidentally move off of the circle because if you move off of this circle you have to wait till the next round and then this is all it is. You basically just defend uh, yourself slash this circle from zombies until the skull reaches the top of that green uh, light pyramid or whatever you want to call it. And then you have to run towards the skull and jump to uh, be able to grab it and then you get the entangler. So right now, like I said, we're just going to play through this whole bit so you can see what you have to do for this. And they can push you off of here too just by spawning or trying to get up here. So you do need to be careful. Try to pay attention, especially this middle section for that. But majority of the time, they're not... Okay, see, it's way over there. So, that, oh. so I got to get around these zombies. 
All right. And again, if you don't make it there in time, you have to start all over too. Please don't start flashing. You're flashing. You're flashing. And I didn't get it. Ugh. All right. Let's try again. Zombie. All right. As you can see, I gotta wait till the next round. So I'm just gonna stand here. For hey, look at that guy. All right. Where's my zombies? Okay. Let's try again. And again, once it appears, we will go ahead and do it. Where to go? Where to go? There you are. All right. Stand on it. Get a good spot. Take your thumb off the left trigger, or excuse me, off the uh, left joystick, and just start blasting away if they try to come up here. And again, we just have to defend, have to defend, and then it'll raise up and we'll be good to go. So let's uh, do that. Whoa, 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 whoa. See? Told you they could push you off. That's why you gotta really watch this middle one. Now, if you have uh, teammates, they can help watch that middle one. Uh, the sides you can usually get pretty good by yourself, but that middle one you definitely have to have some help to cover. Alright, come on, it's almost done. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, there it is. It's done. Rush, 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 rush. Luckily, it's a little bit better of a spot. So you get set, you jump, pop, and grab the entangler, and all the zombies... Hey, wait a minute, how come they didn't disappear? Oh, never mind, that's right. I started the round. <laughs> Oops. Forgot about that. Okay. Alright, guys, so that is skull number two. Let's go ahead, and we will fast forward to skull number three uh, in a moment. Because I want to run around and make sure I've got all the locations and everything. And then it'd be easier just to, okay, yeah, they're here, they're here. Instead of running around like a chicken with my head cut off. So let me pause. I will go find, make sure I've got all the places located. And then I will go into explaining the dreaded skull number three step. So the first cipher location out here at the theater, you're going to look at the ticket booth, go to the left, and it's going to be right there. And as you can see, it is the cipher for the letter K. So you write that down. Now, you come over here, that is the cipher for the letter T. So we write down T. Now we come over here and we check over here in the window beside Racing Stripes. And then we write down that one. And that is the letter Z. All right, so we got those written down. Now let's go check the others to see if there's any other cipher symbols anywhere. And we will go from there. Alright, the next location is usually right back there on the back of that cargo box, but it's not there. So, I think one of these windows could have one, although I've never seen one in there. So I do want to check these real quick before uh, we get out of here. Nope, okay. So now we're going to go over here and we're going to check up in this area. We're going to turn left, we go right here towards the freezer trap. That's the freezer trap, meat trap, whatever you want to call it. And we check back there. And as you can see, we have the one for X. So now you write down X. And of course, I'm caught because I'm writing it down. All right. Here's another location right here. It'll be to the left of Neil. So you go from there. You're going to head over this way towards the med bay. So you head down this way. Go up here. And you're going to look right underneath this cryptid table. Now, there's not one there, but it'll be right there usually. That's another location. And the last location that I know of is actually going to be right over here, if I can find the entrance. All right, here we go. You hop down here, you turn around, and you look up. And it'll usually be right there. Those are the only locations I know of for these cipher symbols. Uh, let me check back here. I don't think there's any back there. So if you know of any locations, please put them in the comment section down below. Now, we have KTXZ, which means our cipher should, uh, symbol should be Z, if I've done it correctly. 
And if it is correct, um, I'm a little iffy about it now than what I used to be because I tried to use the same method to help Dame in that game out and it didn't work at all. And yet, every time I've used it, it worked every single time. So it's, it's kind of got me a little worried that, okay, maybe the method I'm using is not foolproof. But we'll say 60, 50 to 60% of the time, you will usually get it right using this method. Which I'm not going to add, um, or I'm going to add, excuse me, uh, I am going to add it, don't worry. But what I'm going to do is, all right, let me hush so I can look at it. Ta-da! It was. It was Z. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this game. I'm going to uh, cut it off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the method I used in order to solve that for you. So that way you will have it and then uh, you can use that method to help you get the cipher solved every time. Usually within two to three tries, I will say that you will use using this method makes it easier to get a solve cipher code versus just hoping you hit one in the first round and just running around the place. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and we're gonna uh, stop this this part of this video here. This will be part one for Skull Three, and then part two I will add into this showing. Um, exactly how I used that method. So I'll be right back as soon as I can uh, get that uploaded. Okay, as you can see, I've pulled up the Shaolin Shuffle Roof Cipher Codex. Now I've also numbered them. As you can see, there's 26 letters. A through M is 1 through 13. N through Z is 14 through 26. Now, what you need to realize with this is that M and N is the separator. If the number is between A and M, then A is the one you go for. If it is between N and Z, then you go the one closest to Z. So it's closest to A or closest to Z. Now, my code was K, which is A, which is in the 1 through 13 side, or A through M, but that's the only one. Then I had uh, T, which is number 20, then I had X, which is 24, then I had Z, which is 26. So I had three letters from 14 to 26 or from N to Z. You know, maybe I shouldn't have numbered it, just do N to Z. But from N to Z, so I had T, X, Z. So I had three from N to Z. I only had one from A to M. And K was closer uh, to N than it was to A. So that means you transfer over to the N through Z side to figure out your code or your letter. So now we're so now we see okay K is closer to N than it is to A. So now we're going from N to Z. So from here we have T, then X, then Z. Now it's supposed to be the letter closest to Z. Well we have the letter Z. So we just looked at letter Z, and pop, we got the third skull. That's the way I've been doing it. And again, as you just saw, it worked right away. Didn't have to do another round. And luckily the game didn't crash this time or anything. But this method will work. I will. I would bet it will work 70 to 75% of the time. It For me, it has worked 100% of the time. Every time I've done this method, it has worked. So, like I, like I said, in Damon that game, his game, I was trying to help him with it uh, through the chat and so on, he had an A and a Z. Now, that happens, it kind of messes up the method, but you could probably still work it out. So, I can't remember, uh, I think I wrote down what his letters were. Hold on, give me a second, give me a second. His letters were Z, X, T, A. And it was the letter A. So, what I'm thinking is this. Since his was A, and the letters were A, uh, T, X, Z, for the one that he solved. Because some of his chat said, no, you go with A, not Z, and it was the A. So, I, fig I think I figured out what it was. 
if you have A and Z, even though you have two to three other letters from N to Z, and only the A, A is the beginning of the alphabet, so therefore the letter that you needed to pick was A. That's what I think the code is. I'm not 100% sure when it's A to Z, but when it's, uh, like I just said, then we should be good to go. So um, that is all I can figure. That's the method I've been using. You can try other methods. Hopefully, with everybody putting their heads together, we can come up with the exact method to get it every single time. But this is a good starting point if it doesn't work for everybody. But again, like I said, I have done this probably eight times. And all eight times, using this method, it has gotten the correct letter. So, uh, the only the only reason, like I said, it messed me up with Dame's game is I've never had an A and a Z together. So, that could be what messed it up. And again, like I said, I think I figured out what that issue is. So, I think I've got the method figured out for that. If the letter A is in there and the letter Z is in there, doesn't matter what's between them, you go with A. Because A is the beginning of the alphabet. So, while it's not a perfect method... Because, like I said, it has some kinks in it if certain letters are there and certain ones are not. But, if nothing else right now, it's a good starting point. At least give it a couple of tries. Let me know in the comments, hey, it worked perfect, don't worry about it. It's a good method. It does work 70% of the time. But there's times where it doesn't work. But at least it gives us a starting point. So hopefully, it's a good enough method to give us that starting point. So let's go ahead and move on to the... Uh, fourth skull. So we're going to head back and we're going to do the famous skull four. I'm just kidding. It's not that famous. It's just uh, annoying if a zombie gets in your way. But before you start skull four, you need to make sure all your paths to the main bay are clear. No closed doors, nothing. So you, because it starts up here, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute and why. I'm hoping it'll be this path that I'm going to make sure I've got all the doors open. Because if it's a certain color the other way, uh, which I think is actually red or green, for some reason, it is so hard to see at one point that you actually fail it, no matter what. So, okay. And when we're done, we're actually going to end up right there. So, that's good. So that way is open. And the other way, I do believe, is open as well, which is, of course, uh, this way. Because the other way will take you up this way. You'll go through here. And then you go down there, and then, of course, you... Right there. So, that's that way. Alright, but in here, it hits a bright spot, and I can't see it. So, but anyway, we're going to go up here. To the left of Neil's head, you'll see a red X, just like the first one, or Skull 2. You stand on it, oh look, green. So now we find the green path, and we just follow the green path. And that's all it is. It's either red or green, and you just have to follow that path. But be sure not to hit the red, or it will uh, cancel the path out, you'll fail, and you'll have to restart. See, I, I failed because apparently I missed one right there. It, it's right, a, right over here in this corner. I always lose it, and I end up failing. But that's easy. We'll just go ahead and do it like this. All right. Now, we're going to head back up here again. And wait for the X. Stand on the X. We got red. All right, here's my red path. Crap, it loves taking me this way for some reason. And see, I always lose it right there. Alright, we're going to fast forward this a little bit. So, hold on to your horses. We're about to do super speed...
All right, here we go again. I'm not cutting away this time because I don't want the game to... Oh, good, the easy path. Thank you. All right, so we head this way. We just stay on the greens. By the way, I've had green go the other way as well, so it, just because this way is green doesn't mean it's always going to be green. But we head this way, and again, we just follow our color. We stay on that color. Have to keep hitting it so the timer doesn't run out before we get to it. And we just keep going, keep going. Get around the zombie right there, and boom. We have skull number four. All right, let's go ahead. I want to fast forward a little bit. And we are going to get into skull number five. So let me pause, get down to one or two zombies, and then we will come right back with skull number five. All right, guys, here's all the chess piece locations. Now, something else you can uh, find out for the first time, probably, I don't know. But you can hold every single one of these chess pieces at once. Okay, location number one is right here on the scale in the med bay. Location number two in the med bay is going to be right over here. And it's going to be right down there. You can see it right there on the wheel underneath the cryptid. You pick that up. Now, we're going to head through this way. Location number two can be right around the center column. So all you do is you circle around it and you find it to see if it's there. And it's not. So the next location, you look at bomb stoppers, look to the left right there in that corner. And it could be right here in this corner. Same area, except just above it. It could be right there, as you can see. There it is. We now have three. All right, so let's head this way. And we'll go look at the other locations. All right, so another location can be right here. And there it is, sitting right there. You pick that up. All right, we head down here. I'm going to head down this way. You look right there where you picked up that uh, slate piece or whatever you want to call it. And you'll come right over here. And it can be right there. And we do not have a piece there, so we're going to ignore that, and we're going to head back out. And again, I'm trying to show you every single location. Okay, so heading out of the cargo bay, you turn right like you're heading out towards Pack-a-Punch. Go all the way to the back, and you look right over here, and it should be right there in that corner. So that is the other location right there near, uh, what is that called, the Proteus? All right, so after there, you head through here. Of course, there's your checkerboard, chessboard. You're going to look over here to your... You look at the checkboard, chessboard, excuse me, look left, and right here between the, the coffee, boom. There's your other uh, queen spawn that's near the uh, chessboard. And again, it can also spawn right here between the couch and the wall right there. Now, if you go through here, you're going to turn right. You're going to go up. You look at the window, you look down, and boom. There's another location right there. And the final location that I can remember off the top of my head, go down the bottom of your stairs, and it's right there. And that should be every single location. If not, uh, please let me know. However, I will post a comment and pin it so everybody can see it and be able to uh, see every single location typed out for you on this uh, video down in the description below. Now, the easiest way to solve it is first figure out what your queen is on. My queen is on D3. And don't worry, uh, as you can see right there, that's the checkerboard I'm using. And there is a website. It is listed down below in the description to help you with this as well. So let me pause and we'll fast forward past the pause, obviously, but let me pause. And then I will come right back after I have the solution for you. All right, I'm back. Now, I have the perfect solution. So I'm going to call it out as it uh, is A through G without the starting one. So my first one is going to be A8. So you go up here to the top corner. There's A8. Then you go to B2, which is right. Ah, zombie hit me. Luckily, you can pick these back up, so I'm not too worried about the zombie hitting me. So we're just going to wait for the zombie to come out here a little bit. Then we're going to go back in and uh, 
finish off the chest. Alright, so we head back over here. We pick that chest piece up and go over here. We were at what? B2. Then you have C5, which is right there. Now we get away from the zombie. And of course, the starting piece was D3, so we don't have to worry about D. So now we're going to go to E1. So you go over here, go down here to E1, place that. Now you're going to go to F7, which is right up here. Just to get that in place before the zombie hit me. Alright. Wait for the zombie to get out of there. And then we're going to go to G4. Sounds like a bingo match. <laughs> but uh, So we're going to go to G4. So we're right here. There's G4, and our last piece is going to be right there. Ta-da! That was uh, H6, by the way. So now we're done with that one. All right, let me get away from the zombie and change it out, and we will do Skull 6. I want to have these separate uh, together, but part of the same game. So, and uh, we will go from there. All right, let me pause it, and we'll go through each location for the piece of the paper for Skull number 6. Be right all right, guys, like I said, I'll be right back. Okay, now, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go around the map and find pieces of paper. So we need to look over here. All right, it's not there. I don't think it was there. I think it was, there. It was supposed to be over here. Yep, there it is. All right, so that corner is going to be down, up, down. Pause and write that. Is it down, up, down? Yeah, down, up, down. Okay, let me get the zombie away from it real quick because I also want to take a snapshot because if you notice the corners that uh, of the piece, that is how you can tell which end is the beginning and which is the end. So let's go over here. We're going to take a quick snapshot of it. See what I'm talking about? See how it's torn? That tells you what piece is connected to the middle piece a certain way. All right. Another location is going to be down here in the med bay. Actually, no, I think there's two locations in the med bay. One is going to be right up here. It can be sitting right there, as you can see, right there on that notebook. So we're going to take a snapshot of it. The other location is it could be in here. Uh, usually it could be on this notebook as well, somewhere right in there. That's that location. Now, the other location for this side of the map is Peckapoonch. So we're going to head out to Peckapoonch, and once we go through Peckapoonch, then we're going to come back out of... Ah, oh, you thought I was going to say it, didn't you? <laughs> so anyway, so then we're going to come back out of it, and if it's uh, not got a piece, then we'll head to the last two locations I know of, which are at the theater. So let's go ahead over here. And we're going to head in there, and we do have all our pieces uh, already, so we're good to go there. I've already placed them. I couldn't remember if I did or not. So let's head in here, and we will take care of that. All right, so as soon as you teleport in, you're going to look right over here at this bench, and it is usually sitting right there beside that screwdriver. However, it is not here. So we're going to head out, get to a position where uh, we can kill the phantom that spawns, and... Then we will head on in to the theater, and we will find that one over there. Come on, Phantom. Where are you? Should have spawned in by now. Ah, there it is. Alright. Okay, now let's head over to the theater. And again, I'm trying to do this in a continuous shot. Um, when I paused, because when I was pausing and everything the last time, it my game crashed, so I don't want to quit the game. I want to just pause it briefly to go from Skull 1, or Skull 4, Skull 5, Skull 6, but I don't want to risk losing the game. So. Alright, so we're going to head up here. The first location is going to be through this causeway right here to the left and it can be over here in the sink which is this one however i think it could be in either one of them but that's the one i usually see it in is that one right there however it is not there 
So we come through here, look at the concession stand, and there's our final piece right there. Take a snapshot. All right, I'm going to pause briefly because I want to look at the snapshots. And trust me, you really do want to look at the snapshots so that way you can uh, figure out that corner. All right, so the curve right there. And the way I do it is I draw out that curve on a note, piece of notebook paper, and then I move to the next piece. I zoom in as much as I can, and that tells me what the orientation of the code is by the way of the tear. So, and that's that's all I'm doing right now. All right. So right now, my code could be down, left, left, up, up, down, up, down. Or if you flip it upside down, it could be up, down, up, down, down, right, right, up. And that's my two codes. Okay, and uh, don't worry, I'll explain that in a little bit. Okay, so now I have what my possible codes are. Let me get the zombie completely away from that machine. And we will go through it. But anyway, so I'll explain this part to you uh, for the code as well. So like I said, my first possible code, there's two possible codes. My first possible code, let me pause again, <laughs> it makes it easier. First possible code can be down, left, left, up, up, down, up, down. If you flip it upside down because the code might not work the first time, can then be up, down, up, down, down, right, right, up. So, like I said, that's all you got to do. You just take the code, oh, it didn't work the first time, and you flip it upside down, and then that becomes your new code. And that is really all you do. So that's your two possible codes. Now, if that doesn't work at all, then that means that uh, your game could be glitched or you're not entering fast enough on your D-pad, which is the uh, pad left of the joystick on your PlayStation or uh, to the, is it the right on the Xbox? I can't remember. But anyway, all right, so here we go. Down, left, left, up, up, down, up, down. Nope, all right. Up, down, up, down, down, left, left. There we go. Ta-da. Okay, now I want to show you how to do this real quick. So you grab the first color you want, it doesn't matter. And the best method to do for the first step is this. You grab all green, all blue, whatever, and that becomes your... Whoa, don't want to grab that just yet. And that becomes your bottom row. And they all stay connected. Now this is to help you get the achievement. The trophy is beating Skullbreaker. The achievement is getting uh, 10 or more, I think, I can't remember what it is, in a row off of one uh, nuke. So you sit here, you do this, and this is how you get the achievement. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So once you do that, pop, and then you have to find your colored nuke again, which of course mine was green, and of course it's disappeared on me. Where'd you go? There you are. All right, and once you found it, you pop it. Boom. Now the way this also works, you cannot do all the same color because as you see how those skulls are moving away from the other two rows, that's why. If they move separate of each other, they cannot connect whatsoever. So I'm just making these all yellow because this is the first one I grabbed. And then that is all you do. And you go through it and you do this each and every round. Now, just so you know, it, later rounds, if you make that mistake of, oh, I'm going to make them all the same color, and then you find out later that, oh, crap, it's not working, you're going to find yourself in a bond because each round it does move slightly, not much, but slightly faster. And if that happens and you've gotten in a bond, you're probably going to fail. Although it's not that difficult of a uh, game to do on solo, definitely not difficult on 
uh, multiplayer, in my opinion, as long as everybody works together. But, guys, hopefully this tutorial has helped you out with uh, these steps. And if you like this video, please feel free to hit that like button, subscribe. And if you subscribe and you're new to my channel, please don't forget to turn on, to click that little bell and turn on all your notifications. That way you receive notifications of all my future videos and live streams. And again, as I've said uh, several videos, I'm only going to say it probably uh, one or two more times per video when I do this. Once I reach a thousand subscribers, I will be doing a poster giveaway of a Black Ops 3 limited edition, only 250 ever made Monkey Bomb poster. So if you want to be entered for that, help my channel reach over a thousand subscribers. And then I will uh, post a video saying it is time for the giveaway to thank everybody that helped me reach over a thousand. And what I will do is then uh, everybody must like and retweet it. And I will use a special program to make it fair that will randomly pick three people. That is correct. Three people have the chance to win that poster. Because I got three of them. I decided to order three. That way I can give away three of them at one time. And uh, not just, you know, one person only. So let's give three people a chance. So three people have a chance to win this poster, and uh, if you check out my other couple of videos before this one that were not live streams, I posted a picture of what that poster looks like. It's actually a pretty cool poster in my opinion. Great collectible for anybody, especially since there's only 250 of them ever made. So I highly suggest you stay tuned for my channel uh, when it breaks a thousand subscribers, because then I'll post that video and we'll be good to go for that uh, contest. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video again. If you did, please, again, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, this is, until then, it has been your favorite penguin, the Penguinator, and I will see you guys later.